All right, guys, this is the second video. Um, this is going to be the inside tour of the trailer. So I'm going to go ahead and walk in. And uh, I think what I'll do is just uh, go to the back of the trailer. We'll start there and I'll show you some of the neat things about it. And then we'll uh, try to give you a, a fairly good tour. Um, so the first thing you'll notice, which is really kind of one of my favorite things, is when, uh, when you walk in here, check out this floor. So my brother-in-law and I actually installed this flooring. It's a uh, vinyl plank flooring, and it really turned out nice. Um, also, you'll notice the backsplash, which is kind of cool. Very nice cabinetry. This is all aluminum. And uh, there's a sink and stove uh, unit installed in that, which I'll show you in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and step inside. We're going to close the door. And uh, what I'll do first is I'm just going to go ahead and start at the rear of the trailer and try to keep this somewhat organized. So you'll see that the ramp door is also, uh, the flooring's been done on that. I did really nice aluminum trim all the way around the floor so that you can't accidentally kick up a corner of the vinyl flooring. So that keeps it fully sealed up. Uh, on the back corner, up top, those are helmet mounts, so you can hang your helmets. And then you're going to see these kind of weird looking beams. Those are called shoring beams. Shoring beams are designed for cargo trailers. And what they're designed to do is span across E-Track. And uh, you can move them accordingly based on your cargo. So it just keeps stuff from sliding around when you are hauling cargo. Um, I had these custom built to this trailer's width because this trailer is seven feet wide. And I've also done some modifications to these beams. On four of them, you can see I added track to them. And this allows us to use uh, different, different attachments that you can add to the track, such as these L brackets that I made for the bed and couch setup. You can also um, you can also mount fork mounts for your mountain bikes on those tracks so that you can haul all your bikes in here and just mount them by the fork and uh, keep everything from moving around. Um, but the main purpose of these shoring beams is so that we can set up a bed in here. So I do have pictures of this with the bed set up. I'll try to insert those in the video later. I don't know how to do that right now, but I'll figure it out. So what we do is we set up these beams going across and we typically use the lower track. You can see I've got two rows of E-track, but if you set these going across the lower track all the way along the trailer up to the cabinet, uh, that allows us to set up a king size bed in here using these guys right here. So these are carpeted, soft edged uh, pieces of plywood that we've uh, basically cut to uh, fit in here and create a bed. There are three of those. Uh, two are the same size, one is smaller. This is the smaller one. Um, the reason there are three is because we can set up a huge bed, we can set up a regular size bed, and with the smaller one, we can also make a couch by using these beams on the lower section and also using one on the top, and you can create a couch with uh with this so it's very modular and also uh, it's very easy to haul so i can carry the shoring beams on the wall and then we can carry the three sections for the bed and the couch against this wall we just attach those to the e-track and it doesn't take up much space when you do that so that's pretty cool um, on the bottom here i did add some diamond plate just to protect the floor from the shoring beams so that they don't get scratched up or the floor doesn't get scratched up all right, so that's the back of the trailer. Uh, moving this way, uh, right now I've got the Dometic in here. This is a 75 liter fridge and freezer combo. Um, I don't have this thing hard mounted because we take this thing a lot of places with us. Even if we just take the truck, we oftentimes will bring this with. So, um, so basically it just rides in here. We can strap it down if we need to. Um, let's see, over here is a flush mount wheel chalk. So this thing is so that if I want to haul my dirt bike in here, I can just flip this up 
and you can actually see a dirt bike tire track on there. So you just roll the bike up into that and that keeps it pretty stable and then just anchor it. I've just been using the e-track and it doesn't move. So that's pretty cool. You can also store stuff in there if you wanted to. Um, but the nice thing is it folds flat. So you got a nice flat floor. Um, we do set up a cushion on the lower level when we have the bed set up so that you can sleep down below too. All right, let's see. Let's go this way. There's our really cool skull that we got uh, at South Park from a metal artist that does pretty neat work. Uh, you got LED lighting on the walls. Those two there run off of 12 volt uh, DC. This one runs off of 12 volts, or I'm sorry, 120 volt AC. Um, this service box here I tapped into for the air conditioning and heating unit. I've got some hooks on the wall. This is where we normally hang our towels and stuff, jackets. That's a bottle opener right there. You got to have a bottle opener. You got to have cool stickers, right? Got more cool stickers over here. Mike Love is awesome. Two miles high, Alma, Colorado. This is our little friend. Uh, her name is Ming. That's spelled M-I-N-G, Ming. She's our dancing hula girl. Um, fire extinguisher, we normally carry a, a power tank in here. Um, this is a race uh, trailer cabinet, basically, from Pit Posse. And this is where we just carry miscellaneous stuff, cooking oil, cleaner, some propane tanks up there for the outside grill. Um, this flips down, which is pretty cool. So you got a little bit more table space, more storage inside. And then this all locks when you fold it up. There's a little locking thing on the side so you can lock it. Um, so that's really handy and it doesn't take up a lot of space when it's folded up. So that's pretty neat. Uh, let's see, what else are we going to show you? Let's go to this corner here. We've got our, uh, that's our um, AC service box. So it's a 30 amp service that comes in from the campground or shore power, whatever, wherever you can run power in. Uh, and then there's a hook right here that I hang our power cords and our propane hose and just accessories on. And then you've got AC outlets. There's AC outlets all over the place in here. There's one behind that panel also. Oh, this is, I didn't show you this. This is another pit posse part for hanging stuff or just putting your wallet or keys or whatever. Uh, carbon monoxide detector. We've got switches here for AC and DC. There's outside light switches for those four LED lights around the perimeter that I showed you. Um, all right, and then we're gonna show you the sink and stove unit. This is the part I'm probably the most proud of because this took a lot of work. So this is another pit posse race trailer cabinet um, that I purchased. This is a this is a six foot cabinet. It's about four feet tall. It's actually 42 inches. Um, and it's just super nice quality. The nerve wracking part of this was having to cut a hole in the top of it because um, you don't really get too many uh, chances at getting this right. So I made a template and I then cut the hole in the top and then I had to do some reinforcing after cutting a hole in it to the underside of it and some bracing and stuff to make sure that it will support the sink and the stove and anything that you put on top of it. So it turned out really super nice. Um, this is a Dometic sink and stove unit that's designed for RVs. It is very, very clean, super nice design. It's got a nice rubber seal all the way around it. And then of course our backsplash, I did a nice bead along the backside. So everything is easy to clean and just really nice, right? So uh, the stove works awesome. Uh, the sink works awesome and everything is just fantastic. So let's go underneath. I'm gonna open up these cabinets and I'll show you all the goodies underneath. So I've left the top shelf in here pretty much for storage. So you can store a lot of stuff inside this cabinet. 
Uh, up top here, you're going to see your 12 volt DC service. So that's running off of the solar generator. So this thing basically gets DC power from a Goal Zero Yeti 1400 lithium. So this thing will power the trailer all day long, probably for two weeks actually, because there's uh, 200 watts of solar on the roof and the panels, they come in through there, the, the cables, and they just plug right in so you can keep this thing fired up all the time. Um, right now, this is running our 12 volts. You can also run your shore power into the AC and run everything completely off of this generator except for the air conditioning unit. That does need the Yamaha in order to fire that thing up because it's uh, pretty high power. All right, so there's uh, DC. There's your AC and DC solar. You have um, on this wall, we've got voltage indicator with uh, USB ports. And then you've got, that's your water pump switch next to it. So that'll turn on the water pump. Next uh, over here, you're gonna have a Seaflow uh, water pump. This is actually a 60 PSI pump. I've got it regulated down to 45. Uh, and there's also a two gallon accumulator tank so that you don't have much uh, kick on all the time. The, 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 the pump barely ever even runs. And if it does, it's pretty minimal, very quiet. 26 gallon freshwater tank. This thing is all secured with some L brackets so it cannot come out. You can pick it up on the left side and then slide it out, but it won't come out just from trailer movement or bumps in the road or anything like that. There's a manifold right here for water. This is where your city water comes in and also your pump water comes in. And as you can see, there's four ports going out. Two of those right now are just going to the sink. Uh, eventually, one of those ports is gonna go to a water heater and the other port is gonna to go to the outside faucet that will allow you to have water outside the trailer for showering and spraying things off. There's your sink, your P-trap, your drain, uh, some of the bracing that you can see I had to add after cutting a hole in this thing. So I did a bunch of bracing underneath. There's several of these right here. Very clean install. Everything is super tucked up and all the wires are properly routed. Uh, very nice. Oh, and then of course I did run the LED lights inside the cabinet so that um, you have lighting in there. Now the other thing that's kind of neat is if somebody's sleeping over here when you have the bed set up, this is a really bright light. But if you turn this off, you have really nice LED lighting around the kitchen area. So if I want to get up early and make some coffee and leave everybody sleeping over here, I can come over here into my kitchen and uh, make my coffee, make breakfast, do whatever I want to do. And you can even change the colors in here if you want to change it up a little bit, get funky. If you want to have a party, you can make this stuff flash and dance around with the music and all sorts of weird things. But really neat. Uh, makes it really fun to hang out in here and uh, people tend to love it. So uh, this is the inside of the trailer. Oh yeah, here's the air conditioner and heater if I didn't show you that yet. Let's see, get a better angle on it. There you go. So that's the air conditioning and the heat pump. Um, that thing is incredible. Works just awesome. All right, so that's about all I got for the inside, and if you have any questions or want to see anything else, let me know. Thanks, guys.